Shalom. All praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. Salutations to you believers out there that have been redeemed by the blood of our Lord and Savior who came in the first century to establish his new covenant by suffering and shedding his blood for the remission of sins. Uh, made himself a curse, all right, and died to redeem us from the curses pursuant to the first covenant in which we broke okay so he made that first contract null and void and he came to establish a new contract if so you will accept okay and to spoil the principalities blotting out the old handwriting ordinances that was against us Moses yeah I wish I came to set up um, the order of Melchizedek all right and what this is that uh, royal priesthood that was established it had nothing to do with the Levitical priesthood it had nothing to do with the law of Moses all right what was established in the first century was a royal priesthood and in order for you to have a royal priesthood it could only be underneath the order of Melchizedek a royal priesthood underneath the Levitical priesthood would make absolutely positively 100% no sense why because um, when you break down that word Melchizedek or Malak Tazadak it is the king of righteousness okay and the kingship and the priesthood are two separate entities, two separate things underneath the Levitical priesthood. In other words, in order for you to serve as the high chief priest um, underneath the Levitical priesthood, not only do you have to be from the tribe of Levi, you have to come out of the line of Aaron. All right. So this office... Um, that was set up prior to Yahweh Shah Hamashiach uh, would never allowed for you to serve as king and uh, priest. As a matter of fact, that was an act that can uh, have you put to death. All right. So in these times, um, two thousand plus years after the death of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, what is established is a royal priesthood of Melchizedek in which Yahweh Shah Mashiach is our intercessor he is our mediator all right he is the mediator all right he is that lamb he is that Passover all right he is that atonement all right and we look to enter into his rest seeing that we don't harden our hearts like our forefathers did in the wilderness okay this lesson is, is a very, 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 very important lesson, okay? It's a very, very, very important lesson, and it's something that, that I had in my back pocket, you know, for a while. I don't, I don't, I won't go as, as far as to say that I've been meditating on it, um, but, you know, it, it's been in the back of my mind. You know, it's been in the back of my mind, and you know, um, I was speaking to one of the brothers, uh, Jay Hall, and um, you know, I set up prayers for that brother. I, I pray that that you know the Lord keeps that brother, the Lord endows him with um, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Uh, I know there's a lot of confusion, not just in the world in general, but um, with brothers that's uh, you know, you, you still have men trying to hold men to the flesh, man. Whether you're doing it intentionally or unintentionally is is leading men literally to their destruction. It's a false doctrine. It's a false teaching, and there's serious, serious consequences um, behind it. So I'm 
my prayers is that 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 brother is you know um, really really understands you know um, the true gospel. You know, I say that humbly um, because you know. So I mean, I, I don't want to. That's not what I want to harp on. I, I, the spirit jumped on me. Um, going back and uh, uh, his brother posted up a couple of scriptures and he posted some stuff you know and um, he made mention of you know uh, Timothy um, Titus uh, Cornelius okay uh, these men were Greeks all right um, and you know They, they would be perceived as so-called white men today. All right. Um, and, and this is a... It, it, it shouldn't be a hard pill to swallow. But coming out of the beliefs of, you know, the... I, uh, I, I'll, I'll say that a one West mind frame... If you would have told me a year ago, you know, I, I would be making this lesson. I, 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 I would have bet my life savings that I wouldn't have had. But that just goes to show um, the grace of the Lord. You know, the Lord's mercy. Um, him bestowing his knowledge and wisdom and understanding on whoever he will. Um, if you would... Humble yourself down to believe in the word is what ultimately this thing comes down to. Um, and just accepting it for what it is. Um, becoming like a newborn baby, a newborn child. You know, your brain being like a sponge and actually reading the scriptures, reading the Bible. And um, being able to take from it what it is so there's a there's a message that the author is trying to convey here and blessed is the man that understands it doesn't try to add to it doesn't try to take away from it and and this was the center of this lesson so as i was meditating you know the holy spirit really told me you know um, it's heavy man (laughs) This is a heavy statement, and, and it's probably a hard, hard, hard pill to swallow. A hard pill to swallow. But going perfection and entering into the kingdom of heaven, um, you, you, in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven, in order to be perfected, um, you have to forgive Esau. Forgiving Esau is a requirement in order to enter into those gates. In order to be made uh, perfect, um, you have to forgive Esau. And Esau, looking at this thing spiritually, was set up um, intentionally um, for this purpose. And it's real heavy. It's real heavy. So... Um, that that's 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 what I'm going to say, and uh, I want to say this too, right? The Spirit told me something, you know, and that's the Spirit of the Lord, you know, uh, in which you know the Spirit of the Lord is inside of us, man. You really have to believe that. And the Lord told me this. A lot of men's uh, lack of mercy. So it's simple, right? I could say uh, you, you have to uh, show mercy to obtain mercy. That's easy, right? I'll, I'll take it a step farther, right? Um, a lot of men's lack of mercy is literally going to get them blotted out of the book of life this is heavy (laughs) this is heavy like let this sit in right the 
scriptures say this many are called but few are chosen right and I'm going to say this one more time before I get into this lesson a lot of men's lack of mercy is literally going to get them blotted out of the book of life it's really 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 heavy and I'm going to prove this because as, as I was right as I was thinking to this but like I, this this a scripture that's a Hebrew Israelite or I'll say a black Hebrew Israelite camp doctrine um, killer it's a killer like if, if you if, if if you if you truly wanted to see you know men scatter like roaches when the light gets cut on you know what I'm saying via the scriptures you know uh, there's no uh, better scripture to go to than this scripture right here this is Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 7 thou shalt not abhor Edomite for he is thy brother thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian because thou was a stranger in his land real quick right it's plain in the King James Version but I just want to for argument's sake um, let's try the New King James Version right you should not abhor Edomite uh, for he is your brother you should not abhor an Egyptian because you were an alien in his land NLT do not detest the Edomites or the Egyptians because the Edomites are your relatives and you live as foreigners among the Egyptians do not despise an Edomite this is the NIV for Edomites are related to you do not despise an Egyptian because uh, you resided as foreigners in their country right and and, and the breakdowns <laughs> The breakdowns that I've heard in trying to justify this scripture, right? Um, literally will get you um, blotted out of the book of life. Revelation chapter 22, verse 19. Right? I'll start with the King James Version first. Uh, if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Okay. Let's do NLT. And if anyone removes any of the words from this book of prophecy, God will remove that person's share in the tree of life and in the holy city that are described in this book right I testify to everyone who hears the words of the book uh, words of the prophecy in this book if anyone adds unto them God will add unto him the plagues described in this book and if anyone takes away from the words of this prophecy God will take away his share in the tree of life and the holy city which are described in these books he who testifies to these things says yes I am coming soon amen come Lord Yahweh Shai HaMashiach okay so I, I heard men say that this was a clerical error which we really we really laugh at that you know as friends of Yahweh Shai we the understood the, the, the I heard men say that it was talking about uh, Abraham's people or you know just it's not supposed to be there it was a mistake um the butterfly effect that happens if you believe and you die teaching this doctrine and you don't repent from this this, this doctrine is so catastrophic and so destructive because it literally um, tears down everything Yahweh Shai stood for. I mean, everything Yahweh Shai stood for, right? Um, Luke chapter 23. Uh, then uh, then said Yahweh Shai, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And LT, Yahweh Shai, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. And the soldiers gambled for his uh, clothing uh, by throwing dice. All right. Um, 
and they divided his so who was the heaven who was Yahweh Shai saying to forgive right and makes mention of and they parted his raiment who was the ones that was parted his raiment the soldiers right and the soldiers gamble for his clothes throw and dice so um Forgiveness is not just something that Yahweh Shah Hamashiach taught, but it was something that he embraced. Alright, it was something that he embraced. He embodied uh, this form of forgiveness, right? Let's go down to. I want to read 48, right? It says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your father. Which is in heaven is perfect, right? So how do you become perfect, right? How do you become perfect, right? Yahweh Shah Mashiach is literally telling you how you become perfect, right? And there's a reason why he says, Matthew chapter 5 verse 38, You have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. So we know that it had been said. Where has it been said? An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth and the law of Moses. All right. But what did Yahweh Shah Hamashiach came to do? He came to fulfill the law of Moses. All right. He came to complete and to abolish the law of Moses. All right. And let's prove this. Right. Because we can argue back and forth about what, what, how we feel. But what did he do? What did he do, right? But I say unto you, resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn unto him also on the... So to say that Yahweh Shai didn't change the law of Moses, you're deceived. Satan has really deceived you, and he's given you no understanding. If any man will sue thee at the law, take away thy cloak, uh, let him have thy cloak also. Whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Um, verse 43, you have heard that has been said, excuse me, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy, right? Um, and this is something that was, you know, um, this is the stance that men that push the Levitical priesthood on people um, are in these camps that's telling men that they're cursed underneath their old covenant. This is their stance, right? Um, to love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy, right? And often we will use this when I was in a camp. Um, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And I did that in my ignorance, right? Really not really understanding the nuances of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, right? And then again, and it said, ye have heard that it's been said. So that's something that's been floating around, you know. Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, and do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. This is a change. This is... A fundamental change, and this is a radical um, teaching that Yahweh Shah was presenting in the first century. All right, far from what we had been, um, far from what we had understood, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. So. When you say that you're not going to love somebody because they're unjust Or you're not going to love somebody because they're evil You're in opposition to what Yahweh Shai is saying So only Satan would tell you to uh, love somebody who's good Or to love somebody who's just This is now the new understanding This is a nuance <laughs> This is a nuance, okay And the only way to get into the kingdom of heaven is through Yahweh Shai So he's literally given us the blueprint In order to be perfect, in order to see God In order to get into the kingdom of heaven And I'm going to prove this, right That ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven For he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good And sendeth rain on the just and the unjust For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Don't even the publicans do the same and me and my ignorance you know, yeah, I love my brothers, man. I love my brothers, man. You know, uh, uh, who was your brother? And it was actually a guy who said that, who tried to justify himself. And this is by asking that same question, well, who was your brother? And this is when we get the parable of the Good Samaritan, where the Levite passed up the man that was busted up, beat and robbed on the side of the road. And you also had the priest who did the same thing. But a Samaritan came through and helped him. The man actually said, you know, it was the Samaritan, it's the brother. So for you to say, who is your brother? Or they seek to try to justify 
um, it's not the right way to go <laughs> because the Lord even covered that base as well right uh, for if you love them which love you reward have you do not even the publicans do the same and if you salute your brother only what what, what more do you than others do not even the publicans uh wait, do not even the publicans so so what, what that did what that did for me and my testimony um and, and and living like this and having a mind frame like this not only did it have me uh filled with this rage and hatred that makes you a narcissist that's what a narcissist is a narcissist is somebody you know somebody who only loves people that's in only love the brotherhood only does good to people who they think or they perceive to be good that makes you and, and what you see is you know you, you see it around you a bunch of narcissists um that are filled with hatred jealousy env envy um which and, and if you're filled with uh hatred in your heart toward your brother that makes you a murderer okay um let's prove this uh let's prove this right uh So, uh, let's prove this. Um, uh, you have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Right? But I say unto you, Whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say within his brother a cause shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say that food shall be in danger of hellfire. Right? So when you when you have hatred or you have, um, you know, you know, you know, um, in your heart toward your brother, the Lord accounted that to be what, as a uh, accounted you to be what as a murderer. All right, He equated that the same thing as a, as somebody that that is a, a murderer. You know, um, therefore, if thou bring thy gift unto thy heart, thou rememberest that thou hast an alt. Uh, that that brother has an alt against thee. Leave thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First, be reconciled to thy brother, and then offer thy gift. So when you go to the highways and byways with a brother, um, and when you go, you know, if you guys are going to go do the work, you're presenting a sacrifice, you know. But if you have a, a, a alt with your brother, it's, I can't trust this brother. I don't trust this brother. You know what I'm saying? And you let that simmer inside, and you don't present that to your brother. You know, or, or something's going on, or whatever the case may be. But you go through the highways, and you on the highways, and you're talking about brotherly love and this, that, and the third. That's not an acceptable sacrifice to the heavenly Father. You know, that's not an acceptable sacrifice to the heavenly Father. So you're supposed to handle your art because once you let those things um, marinate in your mind, you know, it, it'll come out the wrong way, and then it's like, you know, what I'm saying, it's just the Lord is like, yo, bro, nip that in the bud. You know, don't even think those thoughts. Like, get that out of the way. You know what I'm saying? And this is the um, this is the new covenant right here, brothers. This is this is being changed from within. You know, that's why it says. Um, let's see. Um, uh, I says I says I see. You have heard in old times it says, "Thou shalt not commit adultery." But I say unto you, whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, if I committed adultery with her already in his heart, and we know that heart means the laha, which is your mind. So the Lord, this in this new covenant, you know, you, you're fighting your eyes. <laughs> you're literally fighting your eyes. So you're you're fighting this in your brain. So you, you don't even you're not even giving Satan a place to dwell with inside you. And when you maneuver like this, brothers, I'm telling you. Um, you. This is what we talk about when we talk about cleansing out your temple, your inward, but your thoughts. It was once it was a time where I thought I was free to think certain things as long as I didn't act on them, right? But that was, um, that's the old covenant where the outside of my cup is clean or appeared to be clean, but the inside wasn't. You know, I had all these thoughts roaming around. That's why I stopped listening to music too because. In this process of me trying to cleanse myself, you know, I kept wondering, like, damn, I gotta be. You, sometimes I have these strange. Um, thoughts in my brain i just kind of wanted to get them out and oftentimes it is you just be rapping songs in your head 
you know and you think that it's innocent but it's not so you know and what's these rap songs about you know shoot them up bang bang pimping and you know what i'm saying so that was something that i needed to take for not trying to be holier than thou and say don't listen to music this on the third but it was a necess- uh, a necessity a necessary step that i needed to take so i could be cleansed so i can invite the holy spirit into me so the lord could stop uh start dwelling it with me and the lord was going to say if that right i offend thee pluck it out and cast it from thee for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell so the hell being cast into hell is a, that's another form of superior knowledge um in the book of what's that a uh, proverbs one and seven it says the uh, fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge and wisdom understanding that there is a place of torment and yahusha mashiach is literally um warning you about this place and telling you look it's not worth the lust and adultery and committing fornication um that's not worth going there uh, let's get this in NLT. So if your eye, even your good eye, causes you to lust, gouge it out and throw it away. For it is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. Okay. And this is another fight that we're going through right now because you got men that's telling people that this place of torment doesn't exist. Even though certain men believe in it, um, they won't teach it because they've hitting their talents into the ground and you have men that even admit it hey if the lord gives you five talents it's okay to take one and bury it into the ground when the lord told um in the parable the man that just had one he just buried one talent and he was found unworthy so how much more if you had more you know so we don't do these lessons to this is like serious business like brother please bubba kashat repent repent like that's that's not what you that is not <clears throat> That is not a way to um, lead or to teach, man. Or you, you don't like, like, and it's not a shot. I, 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 I send up prayers for you, and I hope you, um, you understand that it's coming from a sincere heart. All right. So I'm going to say, if your right hand offend thee, cut it off. Likewise, okay. Um, it has been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give him a, a writing of divorce. So when you, when the Lord bless you with a wife, that's a virgin. And she, you know, she cooks for you, she cleans for you, she, um, you know, does her wifely duty, she doesn't step out on you. Um, giving her a, a writing or a bill of divorce is, um, it's not permitted, right? And, and, and it's crazy because, you know, to, for you to say that he didn't change anything pursuant to the law of Moses, there's another scripture that actually goes into this. Let me see. Actually, because it goes into a little, it expounds on it a little bit more. Um, let's go into cross references. Let's see what we have. I'm pretty sure it's gonna bring it up. Um, so Mark chapter 10 verse 2. And the Pharisees came to him, asking him, "Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife?" Tempting him. So they said this tempting, and this was the Pharisees, right? And you still have men that says, yeah, it's lawful for you. These men will allow you. These same Pharisees, and it's nothing personal. Any man that will tell you that, yeah, it's lawful to put away your wife, or any man that will put away his wife, you, you, you don't understand. It's just because Yahweh Shai is not in you, bro. And it's no, um, it's no shot. It's like, bro, yeah, I don't see this. It's like, I'm, I'm excited, I'm, I'm elated, you know what I'm saying, that the Heavenly Father's opened my eyes, and I want to open up everybody's eyes, like, kind of, you got into the truth, but you realize that that truth wasn't actually the truth, <laughs> you know, this is the truth, this new covenant is the truth, this new understanding, Yahweh Shai's doctrine, understanding this, is the truth, and it's like, bro, I want to, I want to, the gospel is something you don't want to hold, you want to preach this to everybody, say, yo, we, 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 we was heading down the wrong path, right? So it says, uh, Mark chapter 10, verse 2, And the Pharisees came to him and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife, tempting him? And he answered and said unto them, What did Moses command you? <laughs> and they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorce and put her away. <laughs> uh, for you to say that the law of Moses and the law of Yahweh Shai are the same is crazy, bro. It's crazy. It's crazy crazy it's crazy it's not bro it's not yahweh shot answered and said unto them for the hardness of your heart he wrote you this precept <laughs> but from the beginning of the creation of god uh them male uh, god made them male and female 
and for this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife and they twain shall be one flesh so they are no more uh, no more twain but one flesh what therefore God have joined together let no man put asunder all right um so 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 this wasn't this wasn't a thing uh, this was Moses did that because of the hardness of your heart so when you bless with a woman that's your wife bro if you put her away um let me see let's go to uh, can I go to this uh, what's that mark 10 let's go to mark 10 real quick and I'm gonna get back to the original I'm gonna get back to the original um, point here, but it's just I can't help but to get on this um, uh, a new covenant, new covenant um, understanding, right? So, so uh, verse ten, it says, and in the house the disciples asked him again of the same matter. So they wanted to get clarification, right? And he said, he said unto them, Whosoever put away his wife and married another committeth adultery against her. What he say? Whoever shall put away his wife and marry another committeth adultery against her. And if a woman shall put away her husband and marry another, she committeth adultery. A lot of you guys can't understand this predicated based off your doctrine that you teach. I'm going to read this again. And he said unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another committeth adultery against her. A lot of you guys can't unexplain this, and, and, and we're gonna our Lord's will we'll get into this. Um so again, you know, there's certain things that just Yahweh Shah doesn't permit, but the law of Moses permits, or the Pharisees permit. So let's just go back. Um what was we at? Matthew I was at Matthew Slack here. Bear with me. Um, was that Matthew 5? All right. So it says, okay, so whoever that, uh, but I said to you, whosoever shall put away his wife, saving the cause of fornication. Now, that has, this is now, this is what Yahweh Shai said. Now, if your wife commits uh, fornication or she commits adultery, you can put her away. All right. So this is the law of Christ, the law of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, right? That, uh, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for uh, the cause of fornication, he causes her to commit adultery. Whosoever shall marry her, that is divorce, committeth adultery. And again, ye have heard that it has been said of old time, thou shalt not forswear, but thou shalt perform thy oaths, right? So in the law of Moses, it was okay to swear, but you had to perform thy oaths. But in the law of Christ, what are we doing? But I say unto you, swear not at all. What are we doing in the law of Moses? I have been heard that you have been said of them my oath. Now if you go here... If you go to a cross reference, you can prove this. <laughs> this is easy. Thou shalt not take the Lord thy name in, in vain, for the Lord will not hold you guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Uh, neither shall you swear falsely by my name, neither shall thou profane the name of God. I am so in Exodus twenty and seven they tell you like if you if you say oh, on God or on, on everything I love and I'm, I'm I'm saying this for edification sake, you know, it has to be true, you know. Or you can't swear falsely by the by the name of God, right? So again, uh, ye shall not swear by the name falsely, you know, if any man vow vow or swear oath uh, to bind his soul uh, with the bond, he shall not break it. So and now in Numbers, is, in Numbers, the, the second chapter is telling you that you can do this, but you just have to be, um, um, you have to be honest with it, right? You have to be honest with it. So, um, so now, in Yahweh Shai's law, Yahweh Shai always tell you, look, don't even do this at all. And if this would have been done, I, I just recently found out that these guys took an oath that, uh, um, you know, um, Masha was King David, you know. Uh, I, I didn't know that, <laughs> you know, being in, being in there for as, many, as long as I did. But what I was thinking about was, well, you, you know, you're not, you, you're not supposed to take oaths, first and foremost. And if Yahweh Shai was at all in them, you know, and there's no shot, but just not gonna take an oath. But why don't why don't why don't none of these camps teach this? Like why? Because it's this is new covenant. The Heavenly Father has literally hid this from men, right? But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, uh, nor by earth, for it is his footstool, 
neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of a great king. Neither shall thou swear by thy head, because thou cannot make one here uh, white or black, but let your communication, yea, be yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is within. Uh, more than this is evil. Okay, you have heard that I've been said, an eye for an eye and a two for a two. To say Yahweh Shah Mashiach didn't change the law of Moses? Like, what, what the hell? Like, but you know what? The Lord hasn't revealed this to everybody. The Lord has not revealed this to everybody. Um, let's go back. I don't need that. I want to, do I have to get this? I do have to get this because I want to, I want to hammer this home to you, brothers. Like, this was written in the law of Moses. If any man strive or hurt a woman with a child, uh, so that her fruit depart from her, and yet no mischief follow, he shall be surely punished according to the woman's husband. He will lay upon him, and he shall uh, pay as the judges determine. Um, for eye for eye, and a tooth for a tooth, hand for hand, and a foot for a foot. If, if any do uh, mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life. So this is this is the law of Moses. You know, the law of Moses is an eye for eye and a tooth for a tooth. All right. Um, it's revenge. It's mercy. All right. But the law of Christ um, is this. Let's go to Bibles. The law of Christ is Matthew chapter 5, verse 39. But I say unto you, do not resist an evil person. For if someone slaps you on the right cheek, offer also the other. That's why I don't understand um, guns. That's why I don't understand guns. Like, if if underneath the law of Christ, if you're not allowed to defend yourself, what the fuck, what, what purpose does a gun serve? So even if somebody was to break inside your home in the law of Moses, you're able to protect your home you know um, underneath Christ you're not allowed to protect your home if they break in they you, you gotta you gotta go quiet they gotta take you Yahweh Mashiach not only told us this but he embodied this he had the uh, uh, potential to call legions of angels and he did not and the elect has to go out like lambs it's it's written when you receive this understanding of how you're going to go out. Matter of fact, Peter said, I got to put off in this earthly tabernacle. Because when you go into the apocalypse of Peter, he knew that how he was going to die. They all knew that they was going to die. It wasn't a thing of, you read this and, you know, you if you love me, you're going to suffer the same fate. They knew that they were going to die. The elect understand exactly how they're going to go out. And it's not going to be guns blazing like Scarface, bro. It's just not. When you really have this understanding, you really realize that, um, you know, you, you can't have a gun and then go out there and cuss out Esau because hey, you live by the sword, you sword, you die by the sword, Esau lives by the sword. Like, you are Edomite if you partake in um, these actions, bro. You, you, you really are. And it does not matter if you're of the tribe of Abraham. You know, it doesn't matter because Yahweh Shabbat Shabbat was talking to the children of Israel when he said, yeah, your father, the devil, the lust of your father, you was do. He was a murderer from the beginning and it bold, not in the truth. All right. So Matthew um, 39, uh, if any man, and, and this is, this was a hard pill for me to swallow. I shot at people in the world for less. So, so, so for fucking, lose my mouth, right? Um, this is not easy, bro. It's not easy. But guess what? <laughs> um, I mean, I, I want to say that I don't want to say it's not easy. I don't want to say it's not easy. I know this is a hard saying. I I know that this is a hard saying. I, I'll leave it like that. Um, you've heard that's been said. Uh, where we at here? Okay, so it goes into the cult and soon. Yeah, I heard it is said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor, hate thy enemy. Yet King David said, Do not I hate them that hate thee? Am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them. I know what King David said, but Yahweh Shah Hamashiach supersedes uh, King David. Uh, he supersedes Moses. That's why Moses faded away. That's why Elijah faded away. All right, but Yahweh Shah Hamashiach was still there. He said, This is my son who am well pleased. Hear ye him. Um, so when you get to talking about bashing babies' heads and that's cold blooded, man. I feel so bad for those kids, man, because it's not you um, that has to suffer. You know what I'm saying? The Lord will really make you eat of that tree, bro. Like this is what's happening. Like you really reap what you sow. You 
really reap what you sow. So when you get to talk, I don't want nobody bashing my little baby's heads in, nor do I want anybody bashing your baby's heads in. So be careful about the vibration you're pushing out into this world, bro. It's, this is not a joke. This is not a joke. This is not a joke. This thing is deadly serious, man. This thing is deadly serious, bro. You reap what you sow. If you don't listen to Yahweh Shah Mashiach, bro, you are going to be condemned. Condemned, condemned. Doesn't matter what was said in the past. Doesn't matter. You guys could run into the Old Testament. You could run to uh, King David. You could run to uh, we ain't living in the time of, of love. We living. What are you talking about? Those things play out underneath the earth. Love and hate plays out underneath the earth. You know what I'm saying? It's not that we just not a, just a time of just hate, 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 or the time of being born. You know, people die, people are born. There's love. There's hate. You know what I'm saying? So to just to disregard what he see he see and got y'all disregarding what Yahweh Shah said in, in, in Ecclesiastes the third chapter is your is your your feel good. It's crazy, it's heavy what's happening in these last times, right? But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you. So, you know, when we when we decide, you know, um oh shoot. Um, there are some Gentiles that there's a remnant of the Gentiles, a small portion that Deadly Fall is just going to have mercy on that are not of the nation of Israel. Um, you know, what did they do to us? They cursed us. They put up curses. Um, Apostle uh, Tahar said, um, you know, put the curses on these guys. And they cursed us. And, um, but Yahweh Shah Mashiach said, you know, don't curse us. So even if we were your enemies, um, the scripture still says to bless them. That curse you So you know We we, not, we ain't throw up no curses On none of you brothers You know Only thing we did Was pray for you brothers And that's what was commanded Of us uh, From Yahweh Shai But if we were um, Why would you curse us If we're your brothers Why wouldn't you If we're going off Why wouldn't you pray for us Why wouldn't you You know Do good to us Why wouldn't you Why would you curse us Right um, When you read the New Testament You know That cursing uh, if you type in cursing and, and you just type in the New Testament, it's basically tell you don't do that. Matter of fact, watch this. Let's go to cross references real quick. So uh, it's not nothing. I didn't take that personal, but I'm just saying this is not what the Lord is requiring. Um, um, so again, uh, Luke chapter 23, verse 34. And then Yahweh Shah said, For Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment. Um, Luke chapter 6 verse uh, 34 And you have, uh, and if ye lend to them uh, Of whom you hope receive What thank ye have For sinners also lend to sinners And receive as uh, and receive much again But love your enemies and do good And lend and hoping for nothing uh, For your reward shall be great And ye shall be the children of the highest For he is kind unto the unthankful And to the evil So yeah he God is kind to the unthankful and the evil And he requires us now to be Kind to the unthankful in the evening as well. Romans chapter 12, verse uh, 14. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Bless and curse not. So even if we were persecuting you, you didn't, you underneath the law of Christ, you don't have authority or right to curse anybody. Even if we were persecuting you, how much more if we're not persecuting you? Bless and curse not. Right? Check this out. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. And I attested to this. You know, you know, um, there's this guy who's um he had like the white pride on his back and the neo 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 Nazi stickers and stuff like that. And um as I was going through what I was going through, you know, um trials and tribulation and error, you know what I'm saying? Um, first of all, like just that whole ah, you you the op is he's the op, you know what I'm saying? White supremacist and you know, and he came through and he was like, oh, um, I need a juice. Anybody, can I, can I get a juice for somebody? And my first thought was, I ain't giving you no fucking juice, nigga. Like, in my mind. And then immediately this scripture came to my mind. I gave him the juice, bro. I felt so good. It feels so corny. <laughs> like, I felt, but I felt so good. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I know that the Lord was proud of me for doing that. But I fulfilled this. And I'll continue to fulfill this until I'm dead and out of here, bro. I, I could care less. Right? Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in, so, uh, in, in doing so, thou shalt reap coals of fire on his head. Right? Um, be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Sounds real Christian. Sounds real Christian. We get made fun of for that, bro. They call us the men in GMS. They call us Christian. Oh, they might as well go to Christianity. 
You know why? Because the love of Yahweh Mashiach isn't in these guys. It's not personal. Um, working with your own hand, uh, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer it. Uh, being defamed, uh, we entreat, uh, we are made as the filth of the world. Uh, we are the offscore of all things unto this day. So I, we can go on about this New Testament. Um, uh, do not render evil for evil, railing for railing, but counterwise blessing, knowing that ye are there unto call that ye shall inherit a blessing. Okay, so we can go on, on, on and on into this, but we'll continue to go on, right? Um, it says, uh, For if you love them which love you, what reward have you have? Even publicans do the same. And if you salute your brethren only, what more do others? So that's what they say. If you salute your brother, oh, that's talking about your brothers. Uh, what do you mean? The scripture is literally saying, if you salute your brother only, what more than others? So how can that be? Man, man, that's a that's a spell that's over you that will block you from seeing what Yahweh said. That's why we call ourselves friends of Yahweh Shai. Because the water Yahweh Bashim Yahweh he's really revealed to us his secrets, everything. Right, this is a beautiful plate of food that you're receiving um, through the Spirit, bro. You know, I can't boast and brag about this. This was given to me, right? So if you salute your brother only, what more do you have than others? And mind you, that's that used to be my excuse. The water Yahweh Shem Yahshua, He redeemed me from that because if I would have died in that thinking, I would have been condemned. Do not even the publicans do so. And they use the publicans because the publicans were like hated in Israel. <laughs> the publicans was like sellouts, the tax collectors, siding with the Romans, making people poor. Like, you, that was like the worst of the worst. So the Lord Yahweh shout my shout again. We always tell you, brothers, go back to the first century spiritually. Be brought up. Acts pray. Lord, take me back to the first century. You gotta pray. Lord, please, Baba Kasha, take me back to the first century. Let me understand what what was going on here around this time. And the Lord will do so. It says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your father which is in heaven perfect and i said when i used to read the scripture i used to say hey, you gotta you gotta aim to be perfect the lord know that you ain't gonna be perfect you can't be perfect but you got what he wants is for you to scribe to be perfect ah nah. no no let me tell you how you're made perfect let me let me teach you the gospel uh, no sorry i'm not teaching you the gospel i'm preaching you the gospel and it's the holy spirit that's going to teach you all things but i'm proclaiming the gospel once you cleanse out your inside what, what's happening is the holy ghost is going to enter in and once that old man dies all right nicodemus <laughs> uh saul once saul turns into paul all right uh once that old man dies um what happens is the yahweh shai enters in he takes over the vehicle and once he takes over the vehicle, guess what? You're perfect. But the only way you can become perfect and, and receive the Holy Spirit is by cleansing out your lahab. And he's telling you how to do so in Matthews, the fifth chapter, Matthews, the sixth chapter, and Matthews, the seventh chapter. That is the new heart. All right. That's the new heart. The teaching of Yahweh Shah HaMashiach. Okay. Um, so I want to go back to. Let's go back. So we started off with what? Uh, Deuteronomy, right? Thou shalt not abhor Edomite, for he is thy brother. You know, it's telling you that he's your brother. It's not a mistake here, right? Because Esau is technically our brother, is the is the uh, twin uh, brother of of Jacob. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then thou shalt not abhor the Egyptian. Matter of fact, I think the next verse literally says something that's crazy. The children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of the Lord in their third generation. And this is <laughs> this is crazy, right? This is crazy because now, well, when did they enter into the congregation? Did they enter into the congregation? Uh, let's go to Acts. Acts chapter 26, verse 1. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Uh, then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things wherefore I am accused of the Jews. The Jews was back at it again, um, trying to uh, persecute and uh, put Paul to death. Okay, um, Uh, I want to kind of jump around here, um, right? I want to jump around because this is this is very long. Um, 
Let's go. Uh, it says, uh, whereupon uh, I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest. This was uh, Joseph Caiaphas, the high chief priest uh, in the temple in the first century. In midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining around about me and them which journeyed with me. And we were all fallen to the earth. I heard a voice speaking unto me, saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the bricks. And this is what we were doing. We were kicking against the pricks, man. We were really kicking against the pricks, right? And he said unto them, uh, he said, uh, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Yahweh Shai, whom thou persecuted. So understand, when you persecute, the littlest is the ones that believe in Yahweh Shai. You're persecuting him. When you, uh, when have you seen me in prison and, and, and came unto me or, or seen me in prison and rejected me? Or came, when have you seen me hungry? When you when you do that to the least, the one you call your brother, uh, you're doing that to Yahweh Shai Mashiach, bro. You know, you're doing that to Yahweh Shai Mashiach, right? So um, he said, uh, I am Yahweh Shai whom thou persecuted, right? Uh, but rise and, and that's another thing too Like you, you Who are you to Question another man's faith or, or You know what I'm saying Like you can't do that if, if somebody believes in the Lord Let them believe in the Lord bro It's none of your business Try to gatekeep And stand at the kingdom of heaven Like a bouncer And you know Brown paper bag Test somebody And condemn somebody That's crazy bro Right But arise I digress uh, uh, But arise And stand on thy feet uh, For I have appeared Unto thee For this purpose To make thee A minister And a witness Both of these things Which thou hast seen And all the things Which will appear Unto thee Delivering Thee from the people And from the Gentiles And unto whom Now I send thee What? Hold on Let's go to this Real quick Let's go to the Bible um, And um, let's go to the NLT It says I will rescue you From both your own people And the Gentiles Yes I'm sending you to the Gentiles So the reason why He's making a difference Between your own people And the Gentiles And he said yes I'm sending you to the Gentiles So let's go back to this What's this Acts 17, uh, 17. Let's fold into this real quick Right It says But arise and stand on your feet for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose To make thee a minister and uh, a witness Both of the things which thou hast seen And those things in which will appear unto thee Right? Semicolon Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles whom I will send thee To open their eyes Whose eyes? Their eyes The Gentiles and the people Right? And the music app or just get YouTube the Gentiles and, and the people Okay Delivering uh, uh, delivering thee from the people uh, And from the Gentiles And to whom I will send thee Again To open their eyes To turn them from darkness to light And from the power of Satan to God That they may receive forgiveness of sins And her inheritance among them Which are sanctified by faith That is in my name Let's look up this definition of sanctified it's very, 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 very important. Um, this definition, sanctified. Okay. Strong's G37. Hagiadzo. Hagiadzo. Strong's G37. Hagiadzo. So that's Hagiadzo, Strong's G37. A very important um, definition here, right? Because it's, it's to purify by expiation, free from guilt of sin, to purify eternally by renewing of the soul, to cleanse, to dedicate people to God with purity, concentrate things to God, to separate from profane things, and to dedicate to God, to render it to acknowledge, right? So, or to hollow. So what's happening to these Gentiles is they're being cleansed, they're being purified, they're being uh, purified, their soul is being renewed from the inside, they're receiving this new covenant, all right? And it just is what it is. Like this, like it's okay. Breathe, cope. <gasps> Have mercy, bro. Have mercy, bro. <laughs> it's okay. 
It says, Whereupon, O Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do the works meet for repentance. For this cause the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. So the Jews went to about to kill Paul because he taught the Gentiles. Not because he was teaching Israelite foreigners. Come on, man. Not because he was teaching people to repent. People been teaching men to repent. Peter in them was known. Peter was Yahweh Shai's first fruit. So he's what he was what Yahweh Shai from the beginning in his ministry. They been was known to be with sinners. That wasn't a big thing. The, the publicans, the harlots. You know, Matthew was a tax collector. You know, um, the 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 uh, what's the the, the daggerites and you know what I'm saying? All those people, the zealots and stuff like that. So that wasn't a thing um, to them. What was a thing that was worthy of death in the first century was damn. This Paul is you 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 preaching this doctrine to the Gentiles, man. You tripping, and it's the same attitude that they have today. These men will kill us, bro. If given the opportunity and a chance, bro, the things that these men say concerning what we're teaching on the gospel that we're teaching, these men, these men are these men. There's no doubt in my mind they would murder us, bro. They would crucify us, bro. Crucify us, bro. The things that we heard, these niggas is talking about love your enemies. These niggas is Christians. These niggas is that's what a man said. These niggas is talking about Paul is the apostle to the Gentile, bro. He is chill, relax, breathe, cope. So it says, For this cause the Jews caught me in their temple, went about to kill me. Having therefore attained help from God, I continued unto this day, uh, witnessing both to the small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses uh, said should come. So he he the, the Lord prophesied uh, Moses prophesied about Yahweh Shai coming and Yahweh Shai having the ability to um, forgive men of their sins and also um, he said um, provoke thee to anger with the people that is not a people Bible. So let's go to this real quick. I want to go to. I want to go to the EU. Thirty two and twenty one. I want to go to what he was talking about here. And um, what 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 Paul was talking about here, and uh, what Moses said. So this is Deuteronomy thirty two, uh, verse twenty one. Uh, they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not a god. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people, and I will evoke them to anger with a foolish nation. NLT, they arouse my jealousy by worshiping things that are not God. They have provoked me to anger with useless idols, and I will arise their jealousy through people who are not even a people, and I will provoke their anger uh, through the foolish Gentiles. So, um, let's go back to the book of Acts. Um... Back to the book, uh, book at Moses did say should come that Yahweh should suffer and that he should uh, be first that should rise from the dead, which should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. I want to cross reference this real quick, pull a couple of precepts um, from this. A um, couple of precepts. Well, this is this is beautiful, you know. Um, like, how, how can you come up against this, bro? Um, um, let's see. So let's let me let me see this. You can bear with me. Uh, yeah, let's go. Let's start here. Um, my praises shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. What? All the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord. One more time. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all kindreds 
of nations shall worship before thee. It's not a big deal. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. All they that be fat upon the earth shall eat and worship. They shall go down to the dust and bow before him, and none shall keep alive his own soul. Okay, um... Let's get a couple more precepts and then we'll go back. Damn, Psalms 27 is... Is, um... Psalms 27, Psalms 28. Um, so this is the law, huh? <laughs> wow. Um, okay, so that just went into the law. Uh... So let me go. There's a lot, lot of precepts that they have here. Oof. Okay. So let me go back down. Um. Let me get out of here. It says, "Uh, Christ should suffer, and, uh, that the Gentiles should be first. Uh, that's how Christ should suffer, and should be the first that should rise from the dead, and should show light unto the people in." To the Gentiles, to the people, and to the Gentiles, right? And as thou hast spoke for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, art thou beside thyself? Much learning does make thee mad. Well, he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but I speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things, before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippus, believest thou the prophets? Ha 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 this is beautiful, bro. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know thou believest. Then King Agrippa said to Paul, almost, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. So Paul gave this elaborate speech, because I didn't really get into the speech, but Paul gave this elaborate speech to King Agrippa, which was an Edomite, right? He said, uh, 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 Paul, almost thou persuaded me to be a Christian. And the reason why he was a Christian, because, again, the Christians weren't Israelite. Christians, uh, first Christians that was called, uh, first believers of the Gentiles that was called Christians in Antioch. Uh, the church that Paul set up was outside of uh, Jerusalem. And uh, Paul said, I would to God. What did Paul say? And Paul said, I would to God. What did Paul say? And Paul said, I would to God that that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such I am such, except these bonds. And when you go into the history, that room was filled with a bunch of Edomites and, and um, uh, Japhites. All right. So he said, I wish that everybody in here was a Christian or like me, except for these bonds. When he had spoken, the king arose up and the governor and Bernice. Uh, Bernice was in there. She also was an Edomite. Uh, and they that sat with them. And when they were gone outside, they walked between themselves, saying, This man does nothing worthy of death or bonds. And then said uh, Agrippa unto Festus, This man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed to Caesar. So Paul appeared to Caesar. So he had to have been sent to Caesar. But if he would have never have been sent to Caesar, Agrippa and Festus would have let them go. But it was Israel that wanted him dead, that wanted him bound. Likewise, it was um, the Jews who wanted Yahweh Shammashiach dead. But the, the uh, uh, was that Pilate? Pilate washed his hands. A lot of this stuff is a hard pill for you men to swallow. It's a hard men for you men to swallow. But guess what? It is the true gospel. It is the true gospel. It's no filter. It's no, I have nothing to gain by this. I, I, there's no cash app here. Don't, you ain't got to cash app me a dime. You ain't got to pay no tights to me. You ain't got to pay me a dime. You know? Whatever it is, I, I'm, going, I'm willing to go to jail. I'm willing to die. I'm willing to stand behind this gospel. Whatever it is. If it's a, a, a Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of, of, of Christ. All right? And, and now, 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 what you have men saying in this is that Paul was saying this to get out of trouble. That's a lie. That's a lie because when Paul was ready to go to, Paul had uh, rallied up um, a donation that was um, given from the churches. He was going to go into Jerusalem. Mind you, in Jerusalem, these men, men made, Paul had money on his head. 
These men literally put a hit on Paul's head. He was a marked man. And the church did not want Paul to go into Jerusalem because it was so much tension. They knew that he was a marked man. You had men that um, said they wasn't going to eat or drink. They made a confession they wasn't going to eat and drink until they killed Paul. So, so people was telling them, please, Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. Don't go to Jerusalem. Right? Um, but Paul said, look, I'm going to Jerusalem. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to Jerusalem, and it is what it is, right? And uh, I, I, that, I don't want to read too much because for the sake of time, but I, I, I'll start up, right? Uh, when he had heard these things, uh, uh, both we and they of the place uh, besought him not to go up to Jerusalem, all right? I don't understand the first century. They begged him not to go up to Jerusalem, but Paul answered and said, "What you, what, what mean you to weep and to break my heart, right? For I'm ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Yahweh Shahamashiach." Come on, man. Paul wasn't ducking no smoke. He wasn't trying to get out of nothing when he was saying what he was saying to Festus. He wasn't trying to wiggle out out of trouble. That man said uh, he stood on the truth, bro. He stood on the truth. He was ready to die for Yahweh Shai. He was ready to be in, in bonds, be in prison for Yahweh Shai. Romans chapter 9 verse 1. Uh, with Christ as my witness, I speak with other truthfulness. My conscience and Holy Spirit confirms it. My heart is filled with bitter and sorrow for my people, my Jewish brothers, my uh, brothers and sisters. I will be willing to be a cur I willing to be forever cursed and cut off uh, from Yahweh Shai if it would say this is the spirit of this man, bro. Come on, man. Put some respect on Paul's name. Put some respect on his mission, bro. Put some respect on the gospel. Don't try to add and take away from the scriptures, bro. If you add and take away from the scriptures, the Lord said if you add, he's going to add the place. If you take away, he's going to take away your name out of the book of life. Your name's not, your legacy's on the line, bro. Your name being written out of the book of life is, 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 is that, is it that deep? Is your hatred that deep, bro? Is your deceptiveness that deep? Do you got to hide your, is it that important to hide your talent, bro? Like, what, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Come on, bro. You breaking my heart, bro. You breaking my heart, bro. For real. Check this out, man. Check this out, right? Romans chapter 9, verse 13. In the words of the scriptures, I love Jacob, but I rejected Esau. Right? Right? Are we saying that uh, are we saying then that God is unfair? Of course not. For God said to Moses, I will show mercy on anyone who I choose, and I will show compassion on anyone I choose. So, it is God who decides to show mercy. We can neither choose it or work for it. Right? Right? So now, when you go into the Lord saying, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated, look at what he's going to say. Right? Look at what he's going to say. Right? In the same way, even though God has the right to show his anger and his power, he is very patient with those to whom his anger falls, who was destined for destruction. He does not he does this to make the riches of his glory shine even brighter on those who he shows mercy, who he prepared in advance for glory. We are amongst those who he selected, both from the Jews and from the Gentiles. Concerning the Gentiles, God said in the prophecy of Hosea, Those were not my people, and I will now call them my people, and I will love those whom I did not love before. Heavy, 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 heavy. Y'all reading Romans the ninth chapter wrong because y'all are reading it from a standpoint of hatred. Y'all not even understanding what's happening here. This is heavy. This is beyond the flesh. This is the spirit, bro. This is beyond what you think it is. Concerning the Gentiles, God says in the prophecy of Hosea, the, uh, those, are, uh, uh, those who were not my people, I will now call them my people. Those, and I will love those whom I did not love. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. What's happening right now? 
Not everyone is of Israel. Watch this. Watch this. Then, at that place where it was told, you are not my people, there they shall be called the children of the living God. Concerning Israel, Isaiah prophet crieth out, Though the people of Israel, as numerous as the sand of the seashore, only a remnant shall save. For the Lord will carry out his sentence upon the earth quickly with finality. And Isaiah saith in the same uh, same thing in another place, If the Lord of heaven of armies have not prepared uh, uh, spared a few of the children, we would have been wiped out like Sodom and destroyed like Gomorrah. Damn. Damn, so so you got ch people that are of the children of Israel, right? That are gonna be destroyed, and you got people that are of that destroyed nation that's gonna be saved. The Heavenly Father is cold blooded. He's cold blooded. He's cold blooded. So I'm gonna close it out there. I hope and pray that that was edifying. Um, until the next time, I say shalom.